Lloyd, now, I, I, I thought about all this, this whole monologue, everything I've been saying, and planned on it. And then Christian sent me this video by Lauren, so by Lauren Southern, where she basically says, capitalism is no good. Capitalism is a real problem. She titled the, the video, as you can see, a, a, a conservative critique of capitalism. Now, I'm going to start in the middle because it's long. It's 16 minutes, and you know I comment so much that it, it gets out of hand. Um, it, so if I started too uh, early. So the first critique of capitalism she had was uh, big corporations and they lobby and they control too much. So the typical conservative attack on big business. Uh, it, it, we talked about that. It's kind of boring. It, 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 it's over and over again. They don't. They don't understand that the source of the political power of business is government. Take away the power of politicians over corporations, and the corporations stop lobbying. Right. So we're going to start with the second critique of capitalism, which I think is a more interesting one the more powerful one, because I think ultimately they oppose big corporations because they're part of this. And that is the fact that capitalism, according to Lawrence Summers, and I think according to many conservatives today, is responsible for the destruction of community and culture. Again, I, I, I'm picking, I picked Lawrence up by accident because this is the video I got, but I think this is a conventional view. You can, this is Josh Hawley. This is Ted Cruz. This is now mainstream. Certainly, it's, it's the people who support Donald Trump. This is now mainstream republicanism. Mainstream conservatism. Not the old conservatives. The new conservatives. They think this is um, even a conservative who I like, who's anti-Trump. Andrew Sullivan believes this. Capitalism is responsible for the destruction of community culture, it's responsible for the, for the opioid epidemic, it's responsible for people losing their jobs and being depressed. Anybody, everybody from Andrew Sullivan to Josh Hawley to Ted Cruz to the people who support Trump today believe this. And if you think the conservatives are different, the only conservatives I know who don't believe this are the, uh, the never-Trump conservatives the people like at the dispatch. And even they, it depends which ones. But generally, the dispatch conservatives are better. They're much more committed to free markets, and they understand that if they're going to win the cultural battle, they have to win it through argument, not through the use of government to do it. So let's, uh, oh, let me put my headphones on. Let's watch a little bit of Lawrence Southers. Uh, I've got two segments I want to show you. Um, both are important. Okay. I, and I haven't listened to the whole thing. So you're going to get, in some cases, in most cases, you're going to get my initial responses because I, I haven't listened to this whole segment. And that is capitalism's destruction of community and culture. I often see many on the right lamenting the loss of old traditional architecture, community, family, and art. Notice architecture. I told you before, right? This is that, that thing that, that Trump passed where the government has to build classical architecture. I don't lament that we've lost old architecture. Good riddance. It belonged in Greece and Rome. Read the Fountainhead <laughs> if you missed that. And yet at the same time proposing capitalism as a solution. It's not. Not even a little bit. Capitalism has no incentive to preserve our culture or communities. And in fact, I'd argue, has negatively impacted families. I think where this confusion comes in is some people observe that Marxism works in opposition to capitalism and to deconstruct the nuclear family and assume, therefore, capitalism must be working to oppose Marxism and to support the family. But capitalism is not Marxism's counter. It came about before Marxism and is therefore indifferent to it. It's simply an alternate system. And while that system can certainly bolster some people's family lives and wealth and material goods, capitalism only moderates for the markets. Capitalism bolsters some people's well-being 
some people's wealth? How did we get the world that we have today? Where did it come from? What's really fascinating about this is the original critiques of capitalism, the first critiques of capitalism, even before Marx, and really simultaneous to Marx throughout the mid, early to mid to late 19th century, the strongest critiques of capitalism came out of Germany. They came out of conservatives in Germany, traditionalists in Germany. He bemoaned the growth of cities, bemoaned the loss of communities, bemoaned the industrialization, the loss of farming, the move to industry, bemoaned the loss of those old style kind of conventional jobs in, in little shops. That was 200, 150, 200 years ago. Conservatives are still bemoaning exactly the same thing. It helps some people. Sorry, Lawrence Summers, you wouldn't be alive if not for capitalism. Or oh, it's unlikely you would be alive if not for capitalism. Lauren Southern is her name. Neither would most of the people on planet Earth. If you look at, if you look at the wealth, all the wealth we have today is a consequence of that capitalism. This idea that capitalism helps some but not others is complete nonsense. No, it doesn't help everybody equally, in a sense that not everybody creates as much wealth equally, but it's the only system in human history that has allowed individual to create wealth for themselves and as a consequence, increase the wealth of everybody dramatically in unimaginable quantities. So yeah, it is the alternative system to Marxism. It's also the alternative system to your mixed economy. It's an alternative system to pretty much every system out there. It is capitalism that has ended, uh, Jennifer says, ended child labor. But more than that, it, it, it ended, you know, the subjugation of women. It ended slavery. But this is the thing, one of the things that... that that uh, conservatives so object to capitalism. You know what else it did? You know what capitalism else did? It destroyed the family. Why did it destroy the family? Well, it didn't destroy the family, but it destroyed the male-centric family in a traditional sense. Because capitalism created opportunities for women to work, for women to use their minds instead of their muscles and therefore make as much money, if not more, than men. It provides opportunity for women to excel. It provides opportunity for Dagny to run a railroad, Dagny Taggart, and her equivalent. It takes women out of the house for the first time in human history and into the labor force as equals of men. Now that pisses off all the incels and men going their own way and the BAP, uh, you know, uh, 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 longing for a Bronze Age where women knew their role and their place. It scares the bejesus out of them, of those unmasculine, fearful, weak, pathetic men who are afraid to match themselves up with a strong woman who actually can work, make a living. But that's capitalism. Capitalism made that possible, and that's another reason they hate capitalism, of what it's done to women. It's liberated them and freed them. So this issue of, of women's role in society came up in the article that I was reading and, and how this really upsets many conservatives, who want, particularly the new conservatives, the new right, who want to see women put back where they belong. Men don't, wanna, don't want masculine women. 
Maybe, but men should want strong women. Men should want productive women. Men should want women who use their minds to create wealth. Men should want talented women. Otherwise, you're a man with no self-esteem. You're not a masculine man. You're nothing. You know, it doesn't mean you're feminine, but you're nothing. Anyway. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. It, it, yeah. Women have detached themselves from traditional roles. And many men hate that. And many conservatives hate that. It upsets them. It drives them nuts. And capitalism did it. You're not masculine if you don't want a strong woman. You're not masculine if you don't want a productive woman. Because you're, you're afraid of being outmatched. That's not masculine. That's pathetic. That's weak. A masculine man is not afraid of any woman. Not for the souls and well-being of its workers. There is a reason to... Capitalism is go about the souls of the well-being of the workers. And she is trying to fight Marx? Capitalism talk about how people can't eat in communist societies. Because capitalism is really, really good at creating surpluses of goods for physical needs. But does it serve, I don't know, your safety needs? Does it serve your safety needs? I wonder if capitalism serves your safety needs. It's interesting that under the capitalism, life expectancy has, grow, has, has expanded dramatically. Uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, for example, uh, because of capitalism, uh, our buildings can sustain hurricanes, tornadoes. Because of capitalism, we have unbelievably safe airplanes, automobiles. Of course, capitalism provides your safety needs. Now, true, not safety from other people, from their violence. For that, we need government. But the more important daily kind of forms of safety, that's exactly what capitalism provides for. Not really. Your financial security can be wiped away any minute by the <laughs> stock market. This is unbelievable. The, the lack of ability to think. Your financial security. Where did you get finance to begin with? Where did the money come from? If you have more financial security where you're a subsistence farmer, and where's the financial security then when you don't know if you'll be able to sell your harvest? Really? Capitalism is the only system where you have any kind of financial security, and it's only to the extent that even welfare societies have allowed for some capitalism some free, some private property, some free markets, that wealth is created, and then you might lose it. But first you have to create the wealth. It's, it's just like the left. They assume, they assume that wealth is just here. They assume that wealth is just created no matter what. It just comes into being. It's shocking the level of unthinking on left and right. Does it serve needs relating to love and belonging? No. Yeah, it's no accident, by the way, that the idea of romantic love is an idea coming out of the 18th and 19th century. The idea that one should choose one's wife, that love should guide one's choice, that marriage is not deal-making, Marriage is not about economics. And what made that possible? That not just the wealthy could choose their wives, but everybody could choose their wives free of economic implications. The wealth that capitalism made possible. Love, in many respects, romantic love in particular, is made possible through the time that capitalism buys you, the wealth that capitalism buys you, and much more importantly, 
the focus on individualism, that it is at the heart of capitalism. This is, these are conservatives. Because having a wife or a husband, and definitely kids, is a drain on your productivity and resources. And anyway, in this culture, apparently it's irrational to limit yourself to just one person. Might as well just use Tinder and count yourself lucky to live in a free society, you prude. That's what they really hate, right? The fact that people actually have sexual relationships outside of marriage, that they, they experiment, that they explore, that they do all kinds of stuff, that pisses them off. It goes against their tradition. goes against the moral code that they inherited through tradition. Uh, does it serve needs related to esteem? Does anyone feel esteemed in an assembly line or in a job where their boss treats them like they should be grateful the company has room in the budget for free coffee? Notice that, again, she views esteem as something that comes from the outside. Esteem is something you grant yourself. Esteem is something you grant yourself exactly on the assembly line. Esteem, and, and notice the assembly line. How many people today actually work in an assembly line? Esteem is something you grant yourself based on your productive ability, based on your ability to put food on the table, based on your ability to produce and create and build. These people are needed as allies? Really? Allies towards what end? Towards what end? What are they going to get you? Bigger government, more government intervention, and now they want government intervene to rule your life, to rule the moral decisions, the cultural decisions, the personal decisions that you make, and they're allies? No thank you. Does it serve needs relating to self-actualization? It's the only system where self-actualization is actually possible. Except for the very elites who under the systems can self-actualize to some extent. But it's the only system that allows everybody, including the masses, to self-actualize. Now notice, this is straight out of Marx. Marx is the one who complains about the worker not being able to self-actualize. In his, in his Marxist utopia, in his communist utopia, all your material needs are taken care of by the state, and you can self-actualize. But it's exactly capitalism that makes it possible, even for the common person, to create so much wealth that they can indeed self-actualize, that they can have hobbies, that they can pursue their personal values. What does it mean if she's critiquing capitalism? She wants the state to intervene so that culture and community don't deteriorate in the way she's reflecting. When she complains about capitalism destroying architecture, what is the alternative to that? What is she proposing implicitly as the solution to that? Well, we need to move away from capitalism, which is what? Towards more statism. That's the only alternative to capitalism, which means state intervention, state control, state regulation. She's not arguing for, oh, we should, we should have more robust debate. We should argue for. When culture and community, I don't care about communities. Communities deteriorate all the time in some places, and they thrive in other places. What happens when culture deteriorates is you have to fight for a better culture. But a better culture is not a culture of classical architecture. A better culture is not a culture in which women stay at home. A better culture is not a culture in which we're sexually prudes. Those are not things that reflect a better culture. Those reflect a traditionalist culture a religious culture, but not better. Better by whose standards? And the reason community and culture might deteriorate, 
The reason why community and culture deteriorate is because of bad ideas, not because of the state or, or not. The solution is not the state. Because it's often because of the state, because of the ideas that lead to a bigger state. The battle for a better culture is an intellectual battle. It's a philosophical battle. It's an aesthetic battle. It's not a political battle. Other than unless that political battle is a battle for more freedom. More freedom to make choices. But that's exactly what she's arguing against. She doesn't want you to have more freedom because you are making the wrong choices. A cultural revolution would be great if it was intellectual. It would be horrific if it used the force of government to implement it. That is what Mao Zedong did and what I think many on the left and on the right today would like to do, use government to impose a particular culture. That's what she wants on the right, and that's what the woke culture wants to do on the left. Freedom is the absence of coercion. Freedom is the absence of coercion. Freedom is the ability to pursue your values, your rational values, the values that are necessary for your pursuit of happiness, free of people coercing you. That includes government, that includes the neighbor, that includes conservatives, that includes communists. You try self-actualizing in a gig economy or in a world where you can lose your job the instant you self-actualize in a way that Twitter doesn't like. It's exactly what the gig economy allows people. You can afford to sit there and complain, but the fact is the gig economy is exactly what allows some people to self-actualize. It provides them with the income, the flexibility, so maybe they can take care of their kids and work when it's convenient for them. Maybe they can go to school and work when it's convenient for them. You can make fun of that, but that's exactly what self-actualization looks like. Also, on a side note, Marxism may have told women that being wives and mothers was shameful, but it was capitalism that broadcast that message so that all of those women would enter the workforce and drive down the wages of their husbands and sons. Oh, that is such nonsense. Oh my God. Women don't drive down the wages. New people entering the workforce doesn't drive down wages. This is like Econ 101. This is the kind of ignorance that conservatives suffer from. New entrants into the workforce increase other people's wages because they increase productivity. They increase options. They increase possibilities. This, all the evidence in the world, just open your eyes. To see the wages stand of living has not gone down as women have come into the workforce. It's gone up. I'm sorry, I didn't know this would be as bad as it is because I didn't listen to it in advance. I should have. It is shocking, shockingly ignorant to talk about women entering the workplace reducing wages. When the labor pool increases, wages do not decline. I mean, there's a gazillion amounts of evidence for this. It means there are more producers, more consumers. If, if, if you have a bigger generation, like the boomer generation, did that cause wages to go down or up? Up. When you have immigrant societies like the United States, say the 19th century, where immigration was far greater than the number of people who were present here on a, on a ratio basis, Largest immigration ever. Did wages go down or up? Way up. Because you bring in new ideas, new opportunities, new entrepreneurs. And it's not just labor increases, it's productivity, pro production increases. People becoming more productive. Now it's true. You produce more, prices might go down, standard of living goes up, up, up. I mean, the, 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 the lengths to which 
conservatives will go to get women back into the kitchen. Unbelievable. Seriously, can we really say that it's all just government systems that have ruined our happiness? And by the way, how did capitalism broadcast that women should be out of the home? You'd, you'd argue the opposite. Uh, the entire marketing campaign of capitalism was to sell, uh, you know, kitchen stuff and all this stuff. Yeah, but I guess it made, it made, it, capitalism made it possible to run a house part time because dishwashers reduced the amount of time we spent washing dishes. Um, uh, uh, dryers and washing machines reduced the amount of time women had to spend with laundry. Uh, 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 pre prepared meals. Uh, meant that women had to spend less time cooking. Now, anybody who thinks all of that is a bad thing, that we should go to an era where we have no washing machines, an era with no dishwashers, an era with no pre-prepared meals, or restaurants, or whatever, that's barbarism. And in this sense, the right is just as barbaric as the left. Is this any better than, than the leftists? Yeah, labor-saving devices, but Linda, it's bad because it's labor-saving devices for women, and we want women to stay in the home, so we have to increase the amount of labor they have to do in the home. Oh, my God, and then we've got Matt T. Cat, who is a, 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 you know, the attitude towards women that some of you guys express is truly disgusting and truly despicable and i hope that the people expressing that do not count themselves as ayn rand fans of as, as objectivists because ayn rand would be horrified horrified by these kind of views of women that are being expressed on my chat or perhaps could some of us admit our work life, addiction to media, obsession with pursuing the next shiny product, the constant demands that we buy things to look a certain way, feel a certain way, watch this. She's talking. Look how much makeup she's got on her. Play that, drink this, eat that. Could it perhaps be this mass consumerism and work life imbalance that has also ripped us from our family, community, and loved ones and ourselves? And maybe this mass consumerism is not a consequence of capitalism. The shallow silly mass consumerism it's improved the lives of maybe the the ugly part of mass consumerism is really truly a consequence of the fact that conservatives have not offered a value system to people to live their lives indeed maybe it's because the value system the conservatives that religion has provided people is so shallow and dull and inappropriate for modern life and inappropriate for a higher standard of living. That's why culture has collapsed. That's why people go with shallow consumerism. Maybe if instead of focusing on attacking capitalism, instead of focusing on latching on to a tradition that is no longer relevant, latching on to a time where life was short, brutish, horrible. Instead of that, Conservatives would have focused on coming up with a better value system, a modern value system, a value system appropriate to a free people, a value system appropriate to a wealthy people, a value system appropriate for people who have time. Maybe if they'd embraced Ayn Rand's value system, maybe if William F. Buckley, instead of kicking Ayn Rand out of the conservative movement, had embraced at least some of her ideas. Not on free markets, but on values. Maybe the world would look very, very different. Maybe instead of looking backwards, instead of trying to conserve, what is necessary is to look forward and to innovate Innovate in ethics, innovate in values, innovate in human relations. What Ayn Rand did and what we're trying to do with Iran's Rules for Life. Don't forget, we're going to have that later this week. 
We're going to do Yuan's Rules for Life, and there'll be a series of shows on this. Um, hopefully, uh, you guys will uh, listen in and enjoy, and uh, I, I think we're going to get a sponsor for it, and um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. That's what we need. We need new rules for life that are appropriate for a wealthy culture, a wealthy society, a society with actual time on its hands. In many ways as well. What Hannah Arendt called the Vita Activa, a state where we must always be busy, never present, and always consuming. It's just soul-destroying. And even if we move on to other factors leading to cultural decay, such as mass immigration with no assimilation, that too has largely been pushed and supported by corporations looking for cheap labor. Really? So mass immigration was pushed on by corporations before there was such a thing as a corporation? For example, in the 19th century? So if there were no corporations, there wouldn't be mass immigration? People wouldn't want to come to the freest, the best, the richest country where there are more opportunities than others? Why the conservatives blame mass immigration and corporations? Why do they need to do that? And no assimilation? Capitalism is the greatest assimilating machine ever known to man. We saw that 19th century, early 20th century America, where people were assimilated into a society in numbers that are unbelievable. But no, everything is capitalism's fault, just like the leftists. Everything bad in the world happens because of corporations, just like the leftists. What's the difference anymore, guys? As for old architecture, <laughs> the utility of a building being nice relative to its price just doesn't add up. Have you seen anybody uh, been to Hong Kong or to, or to Shanghai and the beauty of modern architecture? Have you ever seen a Frank Lloyd Wright home? I mean, because it's old, it's beautiful? Give me a break. Tell me there's not a demand for beautiful buildings when people there are is. flying They're halfway called modern across architecture. the world just to take pictures with them. The problem is that the demand clearly doesn't lead to enough profit. No, there's no demand for boring architecture. There's no demand for architecture we've already seen before. There's no demand for the second-handed. The actual joy of the citizenry in daily life is not a business. By the way, uh, Ken says you're on Cherry Picks, the weakest conservative to represent the whole group. This was sent to me by somebody else. So I, 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 you know, I, I barely picked up. But Lawrence Summers was a, was, a, was a favorite of the new right for a long, long time. But you're right. Maybe she is particularly weak and I need better opposition. So here's the thing. You guys pick. Send me who you want me to confront. Send me who you think I should be critiquing on the right. Send me who you think better represents conservatives because I think she represents them perfectly. I think she does it exactly this way. So go for it. Find somebody better than Lauren Southern to represent the conservative point of view. I'll take them on. Believe me, I'm not afraid of conservatives. Um, I'm not afraid to defend capitalism in front of Marxists or conservatives. This is in large part why the left have won the culture war. They didn't care that their arts degrees weren't particularly profitable, they just wanted to create art. And sure, I'm conceding ground to progressives in some regard, yeah, but I'm also not going to sit here and pretend that you can eat an art degree or that it was the arts that doubled our average lifespan. That was absolutely innovation pushed by commercial interests and capitalism. But the question still arises, what is the point of a long lifespan if increasingly people aren't wanting to live said life? All really? Did she just say that? <laughs> we cannot understate how consumerism makes surviving insultingly easy, but we must also acknowledge it makes living insultingly hard. No, it doesn't. It makes living easy if you choose your values, if you choose your personal values. Capitalism makes it possible for you to pursue those values. Now, the Sad. last one here, number three. Capitalism is indifferent to morality. Capitalism is indifferent to morality. Really? Isn't there more code embedded in the, in, in the very nature of capitalism? Isn't there a particular attitude, a particular view of the world embedded in capitalism? 
a view of the world that is individualistic. That's what you resent. But yes, if you mean by morality altruism, then capitalism and altruism clash. They don't fit. So we're going to listen a couple of minutes here, and then we're going to go on because it is getting late and I have some Capitalism is not a conservative view of the world. True. Capitalism is not a conservative view of the world. Finally, she says something true. Capitalism is about new. Capitalism is about different. Capitalism is about innovation. Capitalism is about change. Capitalism is about the future, not the past. Capitalism is about building, not destroying. It's about creating new stuff, not old architecture. It's about modern architecture, modern in the proper sense of modern, everything. Capitalism is not about tradition. It's not about the old. It's not about conserving. Capitalism is about Uber replacing taxis. Conservatism is about keeping taxis. Capitalism is about iPhone 13 replacing 12, replacing my old flip phone, replacing my dial phone. That's capitalism. Yes. <sighs> it's not a political view at all, really. It's simply a tool which sways towards the highest bidder. If you live in a culture that is deeply sickened, the products that are both created and sold will sicken with it. They won't save it. They won't pull you out of your moral darkness. Capitalism just amplifies what we as humans desire in our hearts. That's right. And if you desire the wrong things, and if you have the wrong values, which is true of the conservatives, then capitalism would only amplify that and make the culture more sick and make the culture more decayed. If you stick to your religious values, values that are outdated or irrelevant, values that are anti-life in many respects, then what you get is a sick, dying, decaying, destroyed culture. What you need is to embrace a modern world. What you need is to use your reason to question those old values. That's what is needed. What's needed is to bring reason into the equation. What's needed is to reject the values that are destroying this culture. And those values are the values of altruism, the values of collectivism, the values of tradition, the values where you're stuck in the past instead of Discovering new values, better values, values that are pro-life, pro-human, pro-freedom, pro-achievement, pro-building. But that's what the traditionalists, that's what the conservatives don't want. And now the, the, the latest evolution in this is that they want to use the state to impose their value system because they've, they've, lost, they've lost the cultural wars. They've lost the culture. And they know they've lost the culture. And their conclusion is that freedom doesn't work for them. Thank you, Noel. That's very, uh, very much appreciated. Freedom doesn't work for them because under freedom, or their perception of freedom, their perception of capitalism, they've lost the cultural war. And therefore, what they need is to use force in order to win it. What they need is to abandon freedom and to embrace statism and embrace the role of government in defining and defending cultural values. The only way to defend a traditionalist value system, they believe, is by use of force. It's with the use of the state. And here's how we get to where the left and the right are the same. They both want to use the state to force their values on all of us. They both reject freedom. They both reject capitalism. We have to accept the fact that to the extent that we advocate for freedom, 
advocate for individualism, advocate for reason. We are the tiniest of minorities. We're a small group of fighters. And when we ally ourselves with the people who would like to destroy us, we do ourselves no favors. When we allow ourselves with the statists, we grant them sanction they do not deserve. And we weaken our position, and we weaken our ability to fight. So we, all of us, need to stick to our guns, stop compromising, stop selling out to these conservative wimps, and fight. Fight for freedom, fight for individualism, fight for egoism, fight for human reason. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brutes. All right, before we go on, reminder, please like the show. We, we've got 163 live listeners right now, uh, 30 likes. That should be at least 100. I figure at least 100 of you actually like the show. Maybe there are like 60 of the Matthews out there who hate it. But, but at least the people who are liking it, you know, I want to see, see a thumbs up. There you go. Start liking it. I want to see that go to 100. All it takes is a click of a, a, click of a, a thing, whether you're looking at this. Uh, and, and, you know, the likes matter. It, it's not an issue of my ego. It's an issue of the algorithm. The more you like something, the more the algorithm likes it. So, you know, and if you don't like the show, give it a thumbs down. Let's see your actual views being reflected in the likes. But uh, if you like it, don't just sit there, help get the show promoted. Of course, you should also share, and uh, you can support the show at yourownbookshow.com slash support or on Patreon or Subscribestar or Locals uh, and, uh, and show your support for, all, for, for, for the work, for the value hopefully you're receiving from this. And, uh, and of course, don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, even if you... Even if you just come here to troll, or even if you're here like Matthew to defend Marx, uh, then uh, you should subscribe, because that way you'll know when to show up. You'll know what shows are on, when they're on. You'll get notified. Right? So, um, yes, like, share, subscribe, support. Like, share, subscribe, support. There you go. Easy. Do one or all of those, please.